I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, Thursdays with Franco. Today we've got another episode and our focus today on the uh, 7th of April is looking at what's possible with Oracle Autonomous Database and other ancillary tools with the lead up to the Formula One Grand Prix. And we've got um, Stuart Coggins in Melbourne, who's going to be at a thing called the Innovation Garage, which we're going to hear about very soon. Hey, Stuart, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Frank. Nice to see you. So, Stuart, you've got this thing called the Innovation Garage. Uh, you kindly shared a few slides with me. I'm going to bring up those slides, but the idea is why don't we get you to walk through this experience called the Innovation Garage, after yep. which we'll have a closer look at how you've used Autonomous and Apex with telemetry data and getting something up and going. Are you good with yep. us going through those couple of things? Let's do it. Okay. So let me share the... Um, application and go to um, share screen and I'm sharing the screen and so Stuart there's this thing called the innovation garage in yeah. Melbourne starting tomorrow morning yeah so it's a it's it, it's yep it's a customer experience and what we've done is we've put together some some F1 themed uh, experiences that um, we can take some of our, uh, our customers and partners through just to give them a bit of a flavor of, you know, get them all excited about going to see the racing this weekend. So the, the theme here obviously is F1, but, but for Oracle and for what we do, it's really a data story. So even though there are five different things on the screen there, we, we basically, it's one big story about how we manage data and how we use it to do cool things on and off the track. So um, do, do you want me to explain each, each one of those? Or Yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, let's talk about the racing simulator. Yeah, so the simulator is very, very cool. It's, um, uh, it, it's been a PlayStation, it's currently a PC game, F1 2021, that outputs live telemetry. Now, the one thing about Formula One is that data is their secret source. So uh, they, they don't share anything on like Sal GP where they share everything. So we have to generate our own data. So what we've got is we've got a racing seat, a eSports simulator steering wheel and pedals and um, a nice gaming setup. So our customers will be able to basically race around. And while they're racing, we use a Raspberry Pi to capture all the data and stream it into uh, Oracle Cloud. So that's what the simulator looks like. Once the data gets into the cloud, then we do what Oracle does best, which is that we sort of do some analytics, performance analytics on there. We've got an eSports driver coming tomorrow. So hopefully he'll be setting a fastest lap for us. Uh, it, it hopefully he can beat my fastest lap. I've done quite a few laps this, this week. Um, so if he can beat uh, the lap, then obviously uh, people will be trying to beat that. And we'll be comparing their lap to, to his. And look, there's a story there around um, how we use some of our data management capabilities, how we use some of the developers to do some of the dashboards, obviously analytics and the story around high performance compute and all those sorts of cool things. So we've built a nice set of dashboards using the data. Um, we've got links there to a couple of things that we've done. The, the reason that you're seeing a picture of Circuit of the Americas is because we're just building the Albert Park version of that now. But, um, but basically we're doing this live analytics of the data coming off the, um, off the simulator. It is all going straight into an autonomous database and we are using Apex, uh, and I say it that way for Ed, um, we're using Apex to just do the, the leaderboards, but we've also got APIs into some of our SaaS apps for loyalty. So if you wanna flick across, unless you've got any questions on that, Franco. No, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, once we've got the data into the dashboards, there's a couple of other experiences we want to do. We're trying to work on some things with virtual reality and augmented reality. We have an augmented reality replay of the lap. Um, and as I've pointed out to, um, to a few people, uh, it, it's quite good fun when, when people spin and crash 
because you get to see that played out on the table in front of you in, in a beautiful augmented reality. So um, we have used some of the outputs from the hackathon that happened just a few weeks ago, the Formula AI hackathon. So you're going to see there's some nice screen images now on the iPad of the lap replay in augmented reality. Um, we've built the 3D room where we've done a, a 3D presentation. It's PowerPoint in 3D. Again, using live data in there so that we can, uh, in a VR experience, still see the data in new ways. So that's pretty cool. I've also got a, a VR racing game, um, which is almost guaranteed to make people ill. So we're a little bit nervous about using that, but we'll have to see how we go. But you're, you're literally sat in the cockpit of a car racing around a track. Um, and it's very unpleasant, but it's kind of cool and unpleasant at the same time. Um, we're not capturing data from that yet, but I think that's something that we could potentially do as we go. Again, the story here about things like, you know, using the, uh, digital twins and, um, uh, and more AI that we can use uh, and, and we can do sort of comparisons and performance analysis in, in a visual aspect rather than seeing numbers or graphs. We can actually see what's happening on the track. There's, there's um, so lots of, yeah, there's lots of questions I could ask you here, but I know we've only got limited time. I think this is a great experience being able to reuse the data uh, beyond its original purpose. I mean, you can do a lot of drilling down and question asking about what you've just gone through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's yeah. Look, it's a great way. It's a great theme to show what we do um, you know, at enterprise level. And there are lots of comparisons of what we do inside enterprises. And that's why when we try and tell these stories, what we don't want is people to think that it's an elite sport and it has nothing to do with me because it's actually quite the opposite. Everything these guys do is pushing the limits of technology and we can learn from that. It's exactly the same as what F1 do with, with cars. You know, a lot of F1 technology is now used in our day-to-day -day cars. And, that, and that's what we're talking about here. Now, the, the, the Lego, uh, which we're not allowed to call it Lego because it's not all Lego. Some of it's 3D printed. Um, it's, we've got a live camera feed um, that's just streaming data through OCI. Um, so we're just doing that. We, we've got, it's a digital twin story. It's a cloud-driven car. Um, it's not going to be moving very much at Grand Prix because... Every time I run it, I strip all the gears. So uh, it's a it's a long story that one. It's got a Raspberry Pi sat on the top with uh, Arduino managing the, um, the the electronics. So we can deep dive that one another time. It's really just a prop for this weekend, but it's quite cool. So let's get back to um, the experiences. So in summary, you've got this race simulator, uh, and for people that are on the call, um, Stuart has let um, has shared a few little throwaway lines. If you've got something like an Xbox or your own instance of a, the F21 game, um, chances are, Stuart, they could be streaming data into your autonomous instance as well. Is that a possibility? Well, they, absolutely. So they can do, they can, all of the code is published. So basically, if anyone wanted to um, stream into their own free tier, uh, or as um, or our autonomous tier, then then they absolutely can. So, you know, we've done some work like this with education in the past. We'll probably try and do, especially with the Lego car, we'll probably try and do something there. But yes, the F1 data, the API is standard public API uh, from the game. And yes, we can stream into free tier very easily. Um, right. You probably run out of data space really quickly, but hey, that's a good problem to have. And so I think we're, you know, I'd be encouraging if someone's got that game um, and they want to play with it, approach Stuart or myself or Jason Grogan and uh, we'll make, you, uh, make it available. You've got the analytics dashboard, which we're going to have a look at very shortly. You've got the virtual reality Oculus Quest. You've got your Lego block, sorry, your cloud block car. Can't mention the word Lego. And you've got this thing called the F1 fan engagement crowd twist so is this some sort of loyalty thing you, you've got going as well yeah yeah exactly so the, the oracle red bull racing partnership um is founded on about three or four fundamental concepts and one of them is their loyalty app called the paddock club and um that's all managed by oracle crowd twist so what we've built for the grand prix 
is our own version of a loyalty app. So as, as people visit the different things we're going to show and we have any, you would have noticed there were some secret codes uh, on those slides. Um, the, the people using the app, the CrowdTwist app, will be able to enter those codes and redeem them for prizes. So we've got a little bit of a, a, a gamification going on of, of the, the system. So all using um, CrowdTwist. I think the, the, the point there is, for instance, we're doing from Apex, when, um, when the fastest app is registered, it sends the API of that event into CrowdTwist. So there's a bit of an enterprise integration story here with our SaaS applications. I like and, that. Uh, you know, I yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay, so enough PowerPoint. Um, this is the actual leaderboard that you will have up on some big screens in the innovation garage tomorrow. Is this correct? Uh, no, that isn't. <laughs> That's not the one. <laughs> okay, which one is it? If I click here, which Go one is it? It's 2022. Okay. Live lap 2022. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, so let's yeah. hit that. And so this uh, one is branded Red Bull. We, we've done some branding around this one. And I think, look, anyone that's done uh, Apex um, and, uh, you know, it, it, some people, a lot of comments are it looks like Apex. And I suppose what we've tried to do here is make it a little bit more branded. You know, customers want to know whether they can do branding in their, in their, their applications. And so this was just a really good example of us using style sheets. Now we've touched on this in the last couple of uh, Thursdays with Franco, where we've talked about styling and we've talked about using, um, you know, branding type uh, bits and pieces. So all of this is done with, with CSS. Um, it's a relatively simple style sheet just to rebrand. Even the fonts we're able to change, um, you know, everything that goes in there. So we've done quite a few bits and pieces just to make it look like an F1 dashboard and add a bit of Red Bull branding in there at the same time. So shall I click on edit page one here, given I'm logged yeah, on as a developer good. and yeah, you can yeah. take us through some of that style sheet stuff. Yeah. So, so the first thing to know is that if you just go to um, shared components, Franco, for me before we look at the page. So the... Uh, or you could do it that way, yep. And you go to static application files. So I've uploaded a, a CSS and, and lots of images. So you can see lots of images here. And one of them in particular is called arlap.css. So that CSS, uh, yep, that one, um, that one basically contains most of the back end. So what we've set in Apex is just to use that CSS and it kind of overrides the default universal theme. You can still use the Apex universal theme, but I've overridden quite a few. So for instance, the background colors, the fonts are all overridden in here. The other thing I've done is I've set all the theme colors. So because we're using F1 color scheme and Red Bull Racing uh, color scheme they're all set in there so you're going to see references to those things in your page so i just wanted to highlight that we uploaded our own version of the css there and we're able to to overlay that so if you now go back to the page just scroll to the top and do edit page one so again um what we can do is if you scroll in your right hand panel if you just scroll that one uh, I don't know whether you call it up or down um, and go to the inline CSS, you'll see that what I do is every now and again, when I'm just experimenting, I will go and put some things in here. So one of the things I wanted to do here was make that logo stick at the top of the page, which um, I, I think I've failed miserably. So you can see where I'm starting to add a bit more overrides to the CSS in here. And I can add some of those color um, schemes here. So you can see I'm using the alternate background for F1 color. So we read, we reference them as um, variables from the style sheet. So that's, I, I, I've started, when, when I get it right in here, I then put them into the style sheet for good to go. So if you just cancel that out and just go to, for instance, last session, um, the last session region. Yep. So I've got my standard code there. What, what I've tried to do here is you'll see that I've got some case statements to set the color schemes. This may not be the best way to do it, but it kind of works really well. In other words, if session one is better than the fastest session one, 
then uh, I set the, the time to be uh, yellow rather than green. So um, it means that I'm um, just setting those color schemes based on the data that's coming out. So I then use, so you'll see I've got S3 coal as my color. If you go back, click on cancel and just go I, to I'm, the column. I'm a decode person rather than a case person, by the way. Are you? Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, we could do that way. Um, but so if you now go to the columns on the left and then go to uh, driver, you'll see um, actually uh, is it, there's an easy way to see this. Go to today's best columns and driver because I made that one a link. So let's let's look at this one because it'd be easier to see. So exactly the same code. If you now look at the HTML expression, you'll see here where I'm basically saying, right, I want a vertical line and I want the color to be the color of the driver's favorite team. So that's what the first line does. So it's a vertical line in the, and that team in hashes comes from that database column. And then on the next line down, and this is where it gets really cool, because what we've done, and thank you to um, um, uh, Scott, I think he was, was it Scott? Who uh, uh, mentioned that, it might have been um, Chris, uh, I've forgotten now. But basically these screens change if you're using it on a laptop or an iPad or desktop, their screens will change. So the top line there shows you the full driver name if you're on a big screen. The second line down, or the third line down, shows you only the driver's initials if they're on a small screen. So it saves real estate. So it's one piece of uh, HTML, and it just gives you a different version for different screens. So basically, when I run this on my mobile, I, all I see is driver initials, and it just reduces the size of the page. So little things like this are really, really neat ways to organize your app to run on mobile as well as desktop. And, and that comes from uh, the actual, I think it was in apex.oracle.com slash universal theme thing. We talked yep. about that. That was those modifiers. Layout. Yeah, layout modifiers. Yeah, absolutely. So again, as I mentioned once before, there's some hidden gems in here. And I think if you just look at it, you go, yeah, that's nice. But actually, it, there's some really cool stuff in here. Um, and I know that, you know, uh, when you're busy building applications or applications, because uh, it's Apex, um, you sort of, you, you, you tend to build things the way you know, and then someone just goes, you know, you can do it this way, and all of a sudden everything changes. And, and so just and to be specific, Stu, is it this element here, or is it, yeah. w w it's that one there, hidden dash yeah. md dash down? So the driver N sets the font size and the colors, uh, sorry, yeah. the font size and the, and the font. Text WHT sets it to white. Uh, I'm also using a modifier there to make it all uppercase. So you see that U text upper. So that's yeah. another modifier from um, Universal Theme. And then it says basically hidden on medium screens down. Okay, okay. And Got then it. the other one is hidden on large screens up. So anything Got larger it. than a large screen. Got it. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to show on the style sheets? Because I would like to go to the data stuff. Given yeah, no, it, it's more of the same, but you, I think you get the idea of where we're starting to use. I do use just just on that. Um, if you want to click on uh, gap, uh, just one of the other columns for yeah. me, not not the customer. Um, maybe actually click on S one. You'll, you'll see we've, we've used the same thing. So it's more of the same. You can use the CSS classes in there, the, the field underneath to be able to set some of these if you don't want to use spans. I use spans because I was beginning to try and um, just do some HTML uh, jiggery pokery. But um, so what I'm saying is, is that where you've got lap time and S1 col, if you click that out, you, you, if you just cancel that page. Got it. You could put those in the CSS classes there under column formatting, which you just clicked off. But yeah, yeah. So uh, S3 col is just a that derived column for the color. So I hide that. Right. 
Okay. Okay. Shall we have a look at the data part of it and then we'll wrap yeah. it up from there? So obviously when you're looking at telemetry from something like a, a Formula One game, there's a heap of data, a heap of data. <laughs> and, yes. And you've made it clear from uh, sessions in the past, uh, there's nothing like a clob or a blob as being an excellent vehicle to grab that data. Yeah, so the blob um, is probably the preferred way. So Oracle has got some JSON data types that are floating around at the moment. Um, at the moment, we use Blob. I think there's a compression technique that goes on in Blob. So, given the amount of data we have, um, the you know there's not there's only probably a dozen columns you can see that are derived as part of that view that you can see in front of you. But data is where we just get a JSON string from the Raspberry Pi, and it's all held in there. This, this view is quite nice now because you can actually see the columns. I think Kurt did some work on the uh, the way we define these. Um, tables now. There's some metadata you can set in your JSON tables to make some of this view available. So we're getting um, from the game, it, it generates up to 60 hertz, which is obviously 60 messages, well not obviously, but it's 60 messages a second. Now that is per each of those different packets. So we get telemetry, motion data, which is where the car is on the track and which way it's facing, and we get lap data, which is all the timing so that caused us quite a few challenges with performance. So um, one thing we've done is we've created, rather than using pure JSON, we flatten them out into relational views, um, which again, you know, I, I know the purists may think that that is, is not a great way to do it, but it actually works really well for what we're trying to do. And, and as a, for instance, we did some tuning and, um, you know, got queries down from, many, many, many seconds to, you know, half a second. Um, and that's with a lot of data. There are millions and millions and millions of rows here. So um, F1 SIM is the raw JSON data. And if, if you want to look at how, what that looks like, um, you can click to the views page that you've got at the top and just click VF1 there, type in VF1. So these are the views that we did. Car data is a combined view of all of the fields joined by the, uh, what we call a frame. So if it's 60 frames per second, they're all joined by frame. So you can see we've got the X, Y, Z coordinates. We've got the throttle, brake, gear. Uh, we've got the um, world position. So that's how we can do mapping. It's the equivalent of GPS, but in a virtual space. And then we've got uh, all the lap times. So all of those things you'll see uh, rendered through those dashboards. So this That's is just brilliant. a flat way of looking at the data. And then, you know, when we use, you know, Darren and Steve looking at our analytics, they'll pick up these flat files rather than trying to use the JSON for the time being. It's just more convenient that way. And sure the data's all in place, right? So it's not as if we're doing transformations and it's out of sync. You've actually got the native JSON data as you've captured it. And then you've yep. got the views, um, that are actually looking at the actual native JSON data. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it, it, look, it, it is really cool. And obviously um, those of us that have been playing with um, data and databases, we're probably more used to, or certainly in our industry, more, sorry, our organization, more used to these sort of relational tables than we are JSON, but you'll see more and more use of JSON now. And I think, you know, Oracle's, invested quite a lot in that side of the business. So it's actually pretty cool to be able to use raw JSON data the same way everyone else does, but inside of our autonomous database. And what's cool is um, you're using the free autonomous instance to do this. You've yep. got your own Formula One gun, Formula One car set up there in Melbourne now, but I could yep. have one set up where I am uh, we could have people from all over the planet and we could all be feeding into this free autonomous architecture uh, just using, you know, yep. these APIs to get the data in there with our native JSON format. And then we could have this lap dashboard, live lap dashboard uh, that doesn't even look, like you said, it doesn't even look like 
um, Apex to, to have it there. Um, you, you I might actually... all time for me, just click on all time. So that that is basically, we, we've been running lots of events, uh, testing obviously events at the moment. And so um, that's the best. So what you just said, if we had multi-tenants where we had lots of people sending data, this would be the best of everyone. And it took me quite a long time to get that top lap time, by the way. So I'm hoping that uh, it won't get beat this weekend, but let's see, shall we? That's cool, that's cool. You know, the first thing I'm going to do is probably knock up a little Python simulator, Python data generator, and put in some fictitious laps there now um, nice. and beat your time. <laughs> um, Mine says we're listing on IP addresses and we'll see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the whole, you know, we could talk about um, immutable data and tracking bad people like me. Um, okay, we might stop there. Um, I'll stop sharing.